This is the almost timely newsletter for the week of April 17th, 2022. What's on my mind this week? The future of digital marketing. My friend Ramon Ray asked the question the other day about the future of digital marketing and listed out a long list of things like Web3, NFTs, cookie-less futures, uh, etc., and wanted to know uh, what we all thought the future of digital marketing looked like. I'm hesitant to use individual technologies or tactics when thinking about the future, uh, mostly because they, a lot of them are, you know, uh, transitory, right? Instead, I tend to think about what we as people, as, as consumers want, what we as people are going to experience, and what makes companies money, right? So let's start with some uh, obvious macro trends. This is, should not be news to anybody, right? People have become accustomed to uh, and expect universally uh, access to the internet through a supercomputer that they carry around on their person, right? These things. 15 years ago, Apple introduced the iPhone. In 2007, it had a 412 megahertz ARM 11 processor, 16 gigabytes of internal RAM, uh, a single 2 megapixel camera, and GSM connectivity. At the time, that was pretty cool, right? Today, Apple's iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro Max, that's a mouthful, um, offers a 6-core CPU at 3.23 gigahertz, a 5-core GPU, multiple 12-megapixel cameras, and 5G connectivity. To give you a sense of scale, right? today's iPhone is more than 15 times faster, than, right? So it's 15 times faster than the original. Um, and the internet speeds, this is where it gets off the charts. The internet speed of today's 5G phones is 15,620 times faster than the internet access on those first iPhones. These absurd advances are why we say the world is mobile first now uh, in marketing and in user experience. Not because marketing wants it to be, right? I think all marketers would have been perfectly happy staying with, you know, just simple desktop uh, web architectures, you know, none of those responsive stuff and AMP and all these things. But no, our customers are literally carrying around supercomputers every single day and expect every digital experience to match the power of the hardware that they operate. Whether or not they know their supercomputers, they expect everything to be as fast as these incredible devices in our pockets. This is why, by the way, I'm not terribly bullish on virtual reality and metaverses and things. Rather than retreat inside a virtual world, which is what a lot of people thought it was going to be, we are transforming the real world around us right, into a computing environment. They're, they're everywhere. Our phones, especially, are hybrid interfaces to both worlds. Google Lens can look at a leaf uh, or a flower in your yard and tell you what kind of plant it is or translate a sign or a conversation in real time. We've made the real world a virtual world as well, right? Second, all this ubiquitous, always-on power means that we can expect absolutely frictionless experiences, right? We expect this everything to be instant. Now, again, this is not news, right? I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Mega merchants like Amazon now make it so easy and frictionless to shop that you can literally yell out loud in your home without ever leaving your couch or your chair and order, you know, a, a crate of toilet paper or Ukrainian pickles, our tolerance for friction and transactions of any kind has dramatically decreased, doubly so after the pandemic. Right? Customers perceive wait times for anything as intolerable, and convenience beats loyalty. Think about the things you can get with a swipe on your phone, right? You can swipe right for a pizza, alcohol, uh, toilet paper, a date, you know, <laughs> touch of a button, and it's there, right? Delivery from your favorite restaurant. When the competition, when your competition is one tap of an app away, uh, you have to bring your A game every moment of every day, right? Search engines like Google return the sum total of public knowledge uh, of the human race to us in the blink of an eye. And that is the standard. That is the bar that we all have to meet. And we are judged harshly and appropriately if our customer experiences don't match that frictionless 
easy, convenient experience that this hybrid virtual world has created. Third, artificial intelligence as a whole is rewiring our brains. The most powerful, barely seen technology shaping everything in our heads is the recommendation engine, right? From movies and shows on Netflix to social media posts in your news feed or your Instagram feed or your YouTube homepage uh, to merchandise on Amazon or Etsy or any of these places, AI is governing how we experience the world. Every time you see a recommendation given to you by something non-human, right? So other than your friend telling you, hey, check this thing out, everything, everything else that we see digitally, there's a good chance that artificial intelligence is involved in the process. And we can't see it, right? We don't know if it's there. And more important, we don't know how it's making its decisions about what it chooses to recommend, just that there is probably a recommendation engine of some kind uh, behind the scenes. This power, as with all power, can be used for good and evil alike. The power of recommendation engines, let me put it to this in stark terms, the power of recommendation engines has killed millions of people in the last two years. The power of recommendation engines has killed millions of people in the last two years. How? By showcasing fake news and disinformation about things like masks and COVID-19 vaccines, causing people to believe incorrect information and not accept life-saving medicine. And to be clear, masks work. COVID, vac COVID vaccines are safe and effective. AI is this hidden intermediary that works through our pocket supercomputers and it governs our behaviors. It changes our decisions. It reduces the decisions we make, right? Think about that. AI is really about helping us think less. Give that some thought for a second. Artificial intelligence is about helping natural intelligence think less. So what do we prioritize as consumers, as a population, as people? We like cheap, for sure, but we really like and expect frictionless, fast, and mobile, right? We expect it. If it's not on here, people are less likely to engage with it, right? We expect frictionless experiences. Swipe right for a date. Swipe right for a pizza. Swipe right for, you know, exotic Thai food. Whatever the case is, um, whatever's in your area, you expect to have a mobile interface to it. And we display a shocking acceptance, just rubber stamp acceptance of whatever machines recommend to us because artificial intelligence is helping us think less and still get what we want, right? When the... The Netflix or the Disney Plus algorithm says, hey, you might also like this show. Or the YouTube algorithm says, hey, check out this channel. And we check it out and we actually like it. We have to think less. So through those lenses, evaluate all the major technologies and trends that people are promoting. And by the way, if someone's promoting a trend really hard, there's probably a good chance that, <laughs> that they have a conflict of interest. I am astonished, just as an aside, at the number of people who are promoting NFTs and cryptocurrencies and stuff and not disclosing that they have a conflict of interest that, oh, I'm also selling one of these. Like, I have a cryptocurrency. Um, I have a creator coin. I don't promote it. I'm not even going to tell you where to find it. Um, I don't want you to find it because I don't believe in it. Um, but I had to try it to see if it was out there. But we have to look at all these technologies, all these trends, all these tools, you know, is it TikTok? Is it an NFT? Is it a creator coin? And look at that through these three lenses, right? Mobility, frictionless, and helping people think less. Let's take NFTs. Are they a mo fast mobile first experience? Sorta. Not really. A lot of the app ecosystems around NFTs are still very, very immature, right? Are they frictionless? Good Lord, no. <laughs> They're the opposite of frictionless. They're a pain to buy. Because you have to buy a cryptocurrency first, find an exchange, jump through hoops to acquire these things and, and manage them. It's like, they're like expensive digital Pokemon is really what they are, uh, at least in their current incarnation. Do they help you think less? No, most definitely not, right? If you're trying to figure out, should I be involved in, you know, lazy lions or this or that? It's, it, it, they definitely don't help you think less. 
uh, or make your life more convenient. So as it stands right now, as they are implemented today, and I'm not saying the technology, the underlying technology is bad, because I actually think the underlying technology is very interesting. Today's implementations are a curiosity at best and not something to, to bake into your marketing plans. What about the cookie future? Now, a, a very popular topic right now. Does it impact mobility? Not really, right? Um, in fact, mobility is sort of driving the cookie future by improving privacy. You know, Apple's uh, iOS 14 uh, tracker blocking and mail privacy protection. Um, all these things are, are pushing the cookie future. Um, so not really a mobi- mobility impact. What about frictionless transactions? It doesn't really slow them down, right? Uh, it'll, it'll slow the overall buying process down because your advertising gets less effective. But first-party cookies, meaning the things that we give to machines, say, hey, remember me, will largely remain unaffected, right? What will take time for marketers like you and me to adjust to is working with the less with less personal data and more behavioral data. But... The savviest marketing organizations will race to adopt behavior-based AI to mitigate these problems and in turn will help us create those recommendations that consumers love without the privacy issues, right? So clearly this is a case where not something you have to worry too much about unless you're very reliant on third-party advertisers. Look at every proposed trend and technology through the lenses of mobility, frictionless interactions, and helping consumers think less. Machines and technologies are advancing at incredible rates, developing powerful new capabilities, but the flesh and blood humans, us, at the end of the value chain, we're, we haven't really changed at all, right? We're evolving very, very slowly as a species. Some of us are moving backwards. Align yourself with the things that humans want and evaluating up and coming trends and technologies becomes that much easier. So use those three rules and assess there's the likelihood of any trend being successful based on how it adheres to those three rules. What else we got in the newsletter this week? Uh, we have a reminder, the uh, B2B uh, marketers essential planning guide is still available for download. Uh, in uh, case you missed it, the, uh, the uh, piece I recommend reading is on advancing your analytics maturity. How do you make progress up the marketing uh, analytics maturity model uh, and a bunch of other stuff on like best time to post for B2B marketers, content intent measurement uh, and a few other things there. Of course, uh, in advertising, we have the uh, Google search console course. If you haven't taken that already, you should probably should. Uh, We've got some new jobs this week from the analytics for marketers Slack community. We have senior account manager, web mechanics, Marketing Manager Tribal Vision, uh, CRM Manager Aaron Condren, Digital Content Delivery Specialist, there's a mouthful, at uh, CMI, and Content Specialist at AJC. Um, Some thank you notes this week. Uh, A few places that have had me on their podcasts and blogs and newsletters. Uh, So I want to say thank you to uh, martech.org for Everything is Measurable in Marketing, the interview I did with them. Uh, Veracity uh, and uh, the Veracity Agency, Why You Need Data in Your PR Strategy. And making sense of data quality amongst uh, current seasonality and uncertainty. That's a heck of a mouthful. That's what the Data Legends podcast. Um, So thanks to those folks for having me. In the news, how to perform a LinkedIn audit for brands. TikTok testing uh, downvotes for video replies. Uh, We also have Google Discover stuff and the update on Google's MUM, the uh, multi-task universal model. Uh, We also have quantum computing and artificial intelligence, improving fairness for college applications, and a very interesting piece on Google rolling out a conversion migration tool for Google Analytics 4. It's in beta. It's not available in most accounts, and I think it's going to be probably more trouble than it's worth. Um, I see it being causing all sorts of chaos because it does not adhere to the general best practices that Google itself uh, recommends for conversion events in Google Analytics 4. So we'll see how that goes. Um, upcoming events. I will, I'm very excited to be going to the Spark Me uh, conf- uh, social media conference in Montenegro in June. Hopefully to see you there. The MarTech conference, uh, which is virtual also in June. Maycon, uh, the marketing AI conference in August in Cleveland. Uh, use uh, discount code PEN150 for 150 off any conference ticket. And the Marketing Profs B2B Forum in October uh, here in Boston. So if you're in town for that, come on over and say hi. 
that's the news for this week. I hope that you had a great week and that the week ahead uh, looks good. Happy Easter for those who are observing that holiday. Happy Passover for those who are observing that holiday. Uh, and happy Ramadan for those <laughs> the, the folks who are observing that holiday. So I'm interesting in the sort of confluence of three major uh, Abrahamic uh, traditions all in one uh, period of time. So happy everything to everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.